The UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change published a report earlier this week which warned that unless we make unprecedented changes to the global economy, the world could experience severe food shortages, extreme weather conditions, and the displacement of millions of people in just 20 years. But with the United States under Donald Trump vowing to leave the Paris Climate Agreement, roll back environmental regulations, and increase fossil fuel usage, is it even possible to avert the coming climate disaster? Joining me to discuss this is Gina McCarthy, former head of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA under Barack Obama. Gina, thanks for joining me on Upfront. Well, it's great to be here, Maddie. Thank you. Gina, the IPCC's dramatic report this week says we have just 12 years until 2030 to make unprecedented changes to prevent catastrophic climate chaos. Does that timeline from the IPCC surprise you? Did it shock you? Well, I think there, were, there was news here. Uh, one was that no longer are we looking for a two-degree goal. We're looking for a 1.5-degree goal. That means it's going to be steeper and hotter and have to be faster. They're doing that because they're already seeing that we're experiencing some catastrophic problems already. We cannot afford the luxury of thinking that we can keep emitting carbon pollution and to allow us to get to a two-degree world. It's just not going to be sustainable. But the other thing it did is it said that, that we have the scientific knowledge, we have the technical capacity, and we have the financial capacity to be able to address this. What we're essentially lacking is political will. And that could stem from people not making the demands on our government. And it can also, I think, provide us an opportunity the, now to speak with a bigger voice and a louder voice. We need action now. The IPCC report says, quote, there is no documented historic precedent for the scale of the action needed now to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. And when you have a recent study showing that 100 corporations just 100 corporations are responsible for 71 percent of the global greenhouse gas emissions since 1988. That suggests that this is systemic. That suggests that the economic system needs to be changed root and branch if we're going to stop climate chaos. Well, the only thing I know that changes systems is demand from people more broadly and more loudly than we're demanding it today. That's what I want to have happen. I don't disagree with you. In some ways, if we can identify the major shifts in systems we need, then we have an exactly. ability to tackle it. And you say, you know, the demands need to be made, agreed. But what are the demands for? Yeah. Do you agree or do you disagree with people like Naomi Klein, the author and activist, or Kevin Anderson, deputy director of the Tyndall Center for Climate Change Research in the UK, who say that it's basically capitalism versus the planet right now? Well, I don't, you know, that's, that's even a broader systemic issue than I think we need to tackle today. Let's, let's think about the fact that we have solutions on the table today, that if we more broadly put those out and provide the right incentives, we can make change happen. I think the U.S. in a capitalistic society can find ways of generating market-based strategies that have the kind of broad impact that we need. So I don't think it's the form of government, it's the ability for people to speak to government, demand leadership that is going to make solutions happen today and invest in the kind of solutions we need over the long term. But the reality is the president of the United States right now is basically a climate change denier who thinks climate change is a Chinese hoax, whose yes, response to the IPCC report was to ask who drew it. Surely it's a disaster for anti-climate change efforts that he's the president of the United States, the country historically responsible for most carbon emissions at this moment in history. Look, at you're not going to have me defending President Trump. Uh, I know what he did in terms of announcing getting out of Paris was against the science. It was against the law. It was a, a, a decision that didn't recognize our moral responsibility here. But in the United States, you can continue to make progress at the local level. You can continue to make progress at the city level, at the state, at the regional level. Now, do I think we're where we need to be? I wish I did. I know we're not. But that doesn't mean that we're all going to sit around and wait for President Trump 
to tell the rest of the world that the U.S. is not going to participate. We are going to participate. People are stepping up, and we are going to do the best we can. So you served under a previous leader. Your old boss, President Obama, did take climate change seriously yeah. and got plaudits for signing he up did. the U.S. to the Paris Climate Agreement in 2015, rightly so. Some of his supporters yeah. say he'll be remembered at least in his second term, if not his first, as the climate president. But it was also under Obama's watch that oil production rose at the fastest rate in the 150-year history of the U.S. oil industry. And he also presided over the highest U.S. natural gas production levels in history? Well, I mean, clearly we didn't control everything because that's not actually what government has an ability to do. But I think this president sent all the right signals about the importance of climate. I think he, he turned at least to a, a, a great record in the second half of his administration on actions to take. Is there more to do? Do we have to now deal with the fact that natural gas was one of the, uh, the transition fuel or the bridge fuel that got us away from coal? Yes, it is. Now do we have to deal with natural gas? We sure do. So the challenges remain, but the fact that he provided leadership domestically in the U.S. and internationally is undeniable in his you, personal commitment you say to this. Is, was important for the world. You say undeniable. James Hansen, who I'm sure you know, the legendary former NASA scientist who brought yes. climate change to the world's yep. attention 30 years ago, he says in an upcoming book that President Obama, quote, failed miserably on climate change and oversaw policies that were, quote, late, ineffectual and partisan. What do you say to him? Well, I mean, I think he's a great scientist, but I think it's very hard uh, always to get scientists to understand that there is a system in which policies get made and decisions get made. I'm not denying the science, but translating science into political will is a difficult thing. And I believe we have failed to broaden the engagement to human beings to make them understand that it's not about polar bears, it's not about ice sheets, it's about them, their family, and our collective collective future. When researchers from MIT and the University of Chicago came out in 2016 and said, quote, if the past 35 years is any guide, the world is likely to be awash in fossil fuels for decades, perhaps even centuries to come. That's the reality, isn't it? And that's why it's hard to be optimistic when it comes to tackling this existential threat from climate change. It's hard. All of this is very difficult, but, you know, I'm 64 years old. The world is nowhere near what it used to be 35 years ago, and, it, and it's going to be remarkably changed in the next 20, because that's what science is demanding and that's what we have to produce. Our low-carbon future as a future that's healthier, that's safer, where our national security is protected, and where individuals okay. can have the kind of clean air and water that they need to survive. That's our only choice. That's the future we need to run to, not be afraid to embrace. Gina McCarthy, I hope you're right. Thanks for joining me on Upfront. It's great to be here, Maddie. Thank you. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.